Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Monday, January 24th. According to a new report tracking all U.S. auto factories, Tesla is now operating the most productive car factory in the U.S. Bloomberg put together an interesting tracker of production at some of the biggest auto plants in North America, and it shows that Tesla barely beat out the competition. Tesla's Fremont factory is putting out 8,550 cars a week. The tight runner-up is Toyota's Georgetown, Kentucky site, pumping out 8,427 cars a week. Coming in third is BMW's South Carolina site, following closely with 8,343. In square feet, Toyota has almost twice the space as the Fremont factory, but produces almost the same number of vehicles. Also, Tesla is known as one of the most vertically integrated automakers, as it makes a lot of parts in-house. This helped the company grow during the supply chain issues that plagued the rest of the industry. After a few pictures leak this weekend, we now have a full video walkaround of the latest Cybertruck prototype. The video appears to have been filmed by contractors or new employees at Gigafactory Texas. It shows the vehicle has no door handles and removable covers over the wheels. The vehicle also features a single giant vertical wiper blade on the driver's side edge of the window. Tesla is expected to give an official update on the Cybertruck program this Wednesday during its earnings report. For now, we're left to speculate how those doors will open. Probably automatically, like the Model X driver's door used to do. According to a new report, Panasonic is investing $700 million to produce Tesla's 4680 battery cells at a factory in Japan. After a successful pilot test line, the Japanese manufacturer unveiled their own 4680 cell developed with Tesla, but now the project appears to have an official green light. Panasonic didn't want to comment on the report and said that it is still focused on the latest test line. The report said that Panasonic was planning a production output of less than 10 gigawatt hours at the plant. At an average pack size of 60 kilowatt hours, that's enough to produce over 150,000 vehicles per year. Panasonic isn't the only fish in the sea. LG, Samsung, and CATL have also indicated that they aim to produce 4680 cells for Tesla. Sony executives have said that the company is searching for a new technology partner to help it bring its electric vehicle projects to life. Sony might as well be sticking with Magna International, the company that not only helped them build the initial prototype, but is also a major player in the manufacturing side of the auto industry. Within good company, Sony would be in the likes of GM, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz, where Magna produces various levels of components, drivetrains, and even finished cars. The electric revolution caught the attention of Sony, a company that was not in the car business, so when Sony Mobility makes other waves in Japan, we expect to see other Japanese automakers follow suit. Volkswagen Group has released numbers on their electrification sales in the European Union. In addition to seeing a 64% increase in electric vehicle deliveries across most of their brands, the German automaker also exceeded average emission targets put in place by the European Union. Including plug-in hybrids, the group completed 472,300 EV deliveries, making it 17.2% of their total sales. Using this data, Volkswagen Group proclaimed itself, quote, the clear market leader for battery electric vehicles in Europe. Now, for some reason, the gas-centric brands that are owned by Volkswagen, Bentley and Lamborghini, were not included in the group's overall emission numbers. Not sure why. Volkswagen says the final confirmation of its emissions will be completed at a later date by the European Union Commission. Guangdong Hongtu Technology, a part supplier to EV automakers, announced that it will begin developing a 12,000-ton die-casting unit with the help of a Tesla supplier, LK Technology. Recent responses from representatives at NIO and Xpeng hint that they might be soon be using one of those large one-piece die-casting machines to make their own EVs. CNEV Post covered a ceremony out of China in which Guangdong Hongtu Technology announced that they will be launching a 6,800-ton chassis integrated structural parts. The Chinese company also entered into an agreement with the subsidiary of LK Technology to purchase eight die-casting machines. The writing on the wall is quite clear. Other companies in China are following Tesla's lead. Chinese automotive giant and Volvo Polestar parent company, Geely, has signed an agreement with the French Renault Group to launch a new collaboration. 
The goal is to bring fuel-efficient hybrids and electric cars to South Korea, as well as export sales to other Asian markets. For Geely, this is a big boost for their component sales. The new Asian market Renault vehicles will be built on the Volvo-developed compact modular architecture. It will use the Geely Volvo-developed powertrains as well. This system underpins the Volvo XC40 Recharge plug-in hybrid and the electric vehicle, the Volvo C40 Recharge EV, every single Lincoln Company plug-in hybrid, and the award-winning Polestar 2 sedan. For Renault, they're calling the new partnership a step in their Renaultion. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.